Hello all. Let's welcome Dmitry, who will present Russian crypto algorithms in the open source world. Good morning. Yeah, that works. Uh, I will be speaking about the Russian crypto algorithms. So some of you may probably know the world ghost. Some of you have visited the Red Hat Dev Conference, where uh, one of my colleagues uh, was speaking about the uh, ghost crypto algorithms in the open SSL and the uh, requirements and the needs to support them. So I'm a software engineer, of course. Uh, I work in the uh, mostly in the embedded Linux world. Uh, working now for more than 14 years. And uh, unlike uh, uh, another Dmitry, uh, Ghost Crypt Algorithms uh, started initially as a hobby time project for me. Uh, unlike Dmitry, I'm not affiliated with any of the uh, commercial companies uh, or any of the actual developers of the uh, Russian crypto algorithms. So it's just my spare time project and uh, for some part of the history, it's uh, quite important because I view it from not from the developer's point of view, but from the user and uh, software developer point of view. So the world ghost uh, means uh, government standard. It, there are standards for a lot of things, starting from the uh, food, from building, from construction, and uh, in the last 20 years, we have started to have standards uh, both on the crypto algorithms. Yeah, just like NIST. Uh, Russian crypto algorithms have developed uh, the full set of uh, crypto primitives and uh, crypto algorithms on top of that. Yeah, just again, just like NIST, just like the uh, rest of the world. We have uh, dig digital signature algorithms based on the discrete algorithm problem on the elliptic curves. We have symmetric encryption algorithms and we have hash functions. On top of those standards, yeah, those are standardized. Uh, we are building a set of the recommendations for the standards, uh, amendments for the current crypto standards, uh, like uh, the, all those yeah, that you use in their uh, everyday life, like public key encryption, the certificates, uh, cryptographic message uh, syntaxes, and all, the, all PKCS extensions. And uh, last but not least, and one of the most important topics is the uh, CLS extensions, TLS uh, cipher suits and I will come uh, to this a little bit later. So let's start from the kind of history, yeah. Uh, I promised uh, to Nikos some kind of myth busting. I will not be going into uh, real deep technical details. If you want, we can speak about that after the uh, short talk. So the first myth, crypto algorithms are all invented by the Russian uh, secret service uh, agencies to be able to undermine uh, the uh, cryptographic users and to be able to actually read uh, Russian email, re read uh, and assign all the Russian um, uh, up, uh, opposite sites, uh, certificates, etc. No, that's not actually true. So the initial set was developed really by the Secret Service, but for the last 15 years, uh, the crypto algorithms are developed more by the commercial companies. Yes, they have license from the FSB, but they are not the agents. They are just uh, security engineers like we are. Uh, crypto algorithms are, ghost crypto algorithms are unsecure, thanks to the works by Nicolas Courtois and by the, uh, uh, mostly by him. It's a common world in the AEC that, okay, it's easy to break uh, ghost crypto because once you have two power 64, uh, cipher text and plain text pairs, you can get the key in you know, 2 power 224 operations. Yeah, that sounds true, but once you have 2 power uh, 64 plain cipher text uh, operation uh, pairs, you do not need any more the key, you have the dictionary. And uh, in fact, more, uh, up to, uh, according to the current uh, cryptanalyst uh, results, all current standards are safe because, well, we have, we have to use them by law in the, in the current, uh, for the uh, secure information. And if, if there will be any unsecurity, if there will be any actual crypto analysis results, 
uh, our commercial companies will be uh, against using them. And so for now, we are safe. Uh, and last, the, one of the most important myths that uh, was brought, uh, is brought regularly into the IETF meetings uh, when uh, another guy tries to write an RFC about the Russian, Chinese, uh, Japanese, any other uh, crypto standard. Okay, the rest of the world does not need the national crypto, uh, the national, another crypt, national crypto standard. We already have AAS, we have the uh, SHA, so why do we need uh, your uh, crypto standard? Why do we need another SM primitive, uh, GOS primitive, uh, Camellia seed, you name that? Well, first, uh, we need crypto agility. Uh, if, the, if we all live in the AAS and SHA world, uh, we uh, lower the possibilities to actually create uh, new things, to create diverse uh, software that will support more than just AES and SHA. And if uh, sometime in the future uh, there will be an interesting crypto analysis result for the AES, for the SHA, well, we will be doomed because the software will not be able to be updated. We have seen that several times when uh, software was just using the SHA1 and now uh, with the, a lot of, uh, with the advances in the uh, generation of collisions for the SHA1, though uh, that software uh, authors have started thinking, okay, how can we upgrade if we did not embed the actual property that is SHA1? So crypto agility is important. Uh, second, it's a full stack alternative. If you do not trust American standards, you can use this one. You can use them together. Uh, you can use any combination of the uh, GHOST and NIST standards, whatever you would like in your own uh, software. Again, this is just an, another full set of primitives like uh, the Chinese uh, guys did, and they are br bringing that to the OpenSSL and uh, the rest of the uh, crypto software. And uh, more importantly, as we open the uh, path to the Russian crypto to the IETF standards. We have started seeing uh, more and more interesting ideas and important ideas generated by the Russian crypto community, by the Russian crypto engineers. Uh, I would name several of them. One of the routine for the symmetric uh, crypto, for the symmetric crypto encryption, for the symmetric keys. That means that once you use uh, a predefined amount of the plain text, you should rekey, you should change your key in the uh, unpredictable way, so that there is no possibility to have an actual dictionary attack, to have the uh, twins attack on the, uh, on the uh, plain and ciphertext amount that you have generated. Uh, the multilinear Galois mode, MGM, uh, and all I'm naming are the current are, uh, IETF drafts. The MGM is, a, is an alternative to GCM mode, uh, it has the lower throughput compared to GCM, but it has uh, more strong uh, uh, it is more strong compared to the GCM. It cannot uh, it, it uses uh, the uh, encryption both for, to actually encrypt the uh, plain text and to generate the MAC value. And so it is not as susceptible to the uh, possible attacks as the GCM is. Uh, TLS external recane. This should be most probably interesting to the, uh, co in comparison to the previous talk and uh, to the TLS users because uh, it actually allows you to and enforces you to change the TLS keys that are used for, to encrypt and to mac uh, each of the messages or each set of the messages in progress of the TLS transmission. Uh, and the, uh, another one of the password authenticated key exchange protocols, uh, the CP, CSP, uh, PA key, uh, this is now published as an RFC, uh, and you, uh, you can also use that. It was invented by the Russian crypto engineers. Okay, the OSS port. Why do we need it? Why do we want it? Why do we, uh, why do we work? Uh, on our spare time to provide the open, the open source support for the ghost. It provides additional tests. It provides additional uh, test cases and uh, test situations. Uh, in the GNU TLS, in the OpenSSL, 
uh, for the open SSL, it is uh, quite important because uh, Ghost Crypto was initially created as the separate Ghost engine, and uh, Dmitry and uh, Titus Wagner from uh, the Crypto.com have faced a lot of the uh, issues with the actual uh, external engine support in the open SSL. Uh, Ghost engine was uh, was and is used for some. Uh, quite some time uh, as the main test case for the external engine support in the OpenSSL. Uh, GUS support provides us a way to replace commercial software. As I said, uh, in Russia, it's mostly developed, uh, GUS support is mostly developed by the commercial uh, software vendors. Uh, it's uh, closed source. You cannot get the source. You cannot read what's inside. And if you want to check the signatures, if you want to read the encrypted data, you have to either use uh, that commercial closed source software or you have to write your own support. For example, to check that uh, the signature on my ham radio license uh, is valid, I, should ha uh, I had written uh, support for the, uh, for the uh, GOF signatures in the GNU TLS. Uh, that's just, again, that's just to verify that my ham radio license is valid. And last but not least, it's fun. So the current status, OpenSSL, it was the primary target by my colleagues. Uh, it, was, it is supported since uh, 2004, 2005. Uh, it has a really long history because uh, to actually support the uh, GUST algorithms, the GUST dig digital signatures, uh, my colleagues had to invent the, uh, and to enforce the use of the uh, Algorithm neutral uh, API for public key encryption in the OpenSSL. So that was a, a really long, long, long term project for them, but uh, uh, they were successful. And uh, nowadays, OpenSSL has the algorithm neutral public key functions. You can use them, uh, and you should use them for, the, for accessing the public key function set instead of the individuals uh, encoding. Okay, this, is, uh, this uses RSA, this uses DSA. This is uh, elliptic curve uh, digital signatures. Oh, and nowadays you have another set of uh, public key encryption, and you have to add these, and oh, and you have to add this, oh, and this goes more and more into a nightmare. LibreSSL, a fork of the OpenSSL by OpenBSD guys, they have thrown away uh, most of the engine support. They have thrown away the external engines. So uh, when, that, when that fork started, uh, we had to actually re uh, rewrite the Ghost Engine piece of code into the core LibreSSL functionality. And uh, LibreSSL was, was one of the first major crypto libraries, to actually open source crypto libraries, to gain the full Ghost crypto support. Uh, GNU TLS, uh, another major TLS implementation, Currently, it has the uh, public key uh, support, it has the signature support, and for the TLS, uh, the patch set is ready. It's waiting on the GitLab, as a GitLab merge request on the GNU TLS site. We are waiting for the IANA uh, numbers uh, to be assigned to the actual TLS cyber suits so that we will not be just using the private numbers in the, uh, uh, in the final opens all software, but we'll be using the uh, assigned numbers, and uh, we will be using that as the main test suite of, to check, uh, to cross-check the OpenSSL and GNU TLS support for that. LibGCrypt, uh, software created by Werner Koch, another low-level library. It doesn't have TLS, it doesn't have uh, actual uh, PKCS, it's just low-level alg algorithms and it was one of the first targets by me uh, to write Ghost support because it allows uh, us to use the GNU-PG with the Ghost. It allows us to use the rest of the software with GNU-PG without uh, actually uh, having to implement uh, it in the uh, Cleopatra in the uh, rest of the KD, the rest of the GNOME uh, software. XML sec signatures for the XML. Uh, for the XML. There is a long, uh, there is a narrow uh, C on that, and there is support in the XML uh, sec library. That was the bright part. Right. Okay, on the other part, uh, the crypto library that is used by the GNU TLS and by some other projects, the Neto library. Uh, unfortunately, the, the patches do exist. The patches were accepted in the GNU TLS uh, tree, 
uh, but the NATO uh, is slow in accepting them. So uh, GNU TLS is using them. It's GNU is, uh, has the uh, necessary code bundled instead of using the part of the NATO library. Boring SSL, yeah, another boring story. Uh, neither my colleagues nor me had time to port the OpenSSL code to the Born SSL, to another OpenSSL fork. It should be easy, and it should gain us the uh, GOS support in Chrome and Chromium, but it just it is not yet done, and uh, we don't expect any serious problems except the code acceptance in the uh, Google's tree. NSS, the very famous and very big crypto library, it was the former standard for most of us. The patches do exist for a really long on time, since uh, 2005, I think, or 2006. But uh, the uh, Mozilla guys are very slow and very reluctant and resistant to accepting them, mostly because they do not see, fe uh, see the need to have another national, uh, national code and uh, because of the uh, issues with the quality of the patch as well. They work, but uh, they are not accepted. Bind 9, DNSSEC, you know that. Uh, you know that well, there is a ghost RFC on the DNSSEC. Uh, the, the RFC is old, it uses the old and obsolete uh, ghost algorithms, and Bind has dropped, Bind has dropped the support for the ghost encryption. Uh, we should be updating the, uh, both the standards and the Bind 9 with the uh, new algorithms. And last but not least, uh, there is no open source APSX software that actually supports uh, uh, Russian crypto. We are working on that. There, are, there is a plan to write a new set of standards on the APSEC uh, using the AAD uh, algorithms by using AAD mode, but currently there is no APSEC. Yeah, last but not least, uh, my marketing department has insisted on inserting this slide, so. Yeah, thanks to them for allowing me to come to uh, Force Dem and uh, to speak to you. So that's all for now that I wanted to talk about the Gus Crypto. Uh, I did not go into technical details in my uh, talk, but if you, if you want, we can discuss that either right now or later. So, any questions? Any questions? Hello. So I don't know if this is a bad question, but uh, can you share your thoughts on Telegram? Sorry? What about Telegram? Uh, I, uh, well, we, we are using 4G and 3G that are developed by major vendors. There is, uh, as far as I know, there is no specific set to encrypt the uh, uh, 3G, 4G, 5G uh, messages. So there, are, there is no special for phone encryption. We, uh, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, the, uh, the, the backbone uses the famous SS7 protocol, and so uh, you don't have to really change the encryption if, uh, if, if you can tap uh, into the uh, phone providers by law by using the uh, infamous SORM system for operation uh, investigation uh, matters which you have to install if you are the internet service provider or the telecom provider. So there is no special set of crypto standards. Yes, a question about uh, have you had any pushback from NIST or other government organizations um, while pressuring people not to accept the GOST standard? Not as far as we know. So uh, in fact, uh, Every, uh, well, most everybody uh, creating their own national standards, and NIST is one of them, NIST and uh, NSA, uh, is pushing for accepting national standards because accepting Russian uh, standards into IETF is a way to also accept NSA standards into IETF. Okay, so it's not good, it's not bad, it's just another argument for them. Yeah. So. It, they, yeah, they do not recommend using that, of course, because they have their own set of recommendations. But there is no real pushback. Hello, uh, thanks for your talk. I wanted to ask how much comparative cryptanalysis has been done on GOST compared to the NIST submissions? 
uh, of course, the amount of cryptanalysis is much lower, uh, and uh, the amount of public cryptanalysis is much lower uh, compared to NIST. Uh, I do not have a full list of references to the cryptanalysis with me uh, in, in this slide set. We can talk about that. Afterwards, I have an, on another set of slides uh, created by one of my colleagues. Uh, but, so, uh, well, the, all the algorithms have received the cryptanalysis both internally and externally. Any other question? Do you, do you have any information comparing to AS, RSA, Salsa, Chacha algorithms in terms of uh, comparison tables or benchmarks? Uh, what is better? Uh, Other benefits? Okay, if we compare the uh, if we compare to the AS, it's quite interesting because uh, if we do not use AS and I instructions the comparison will be much part and part because uh, we use the, uh, more or less the same constructions everywhere, both AES and the uh, latest uh, items Kuznetic Grasshopper. But uh, if we allow one to use the AES and I instructions, if we allow one to use the PCL D, a set of instructions specifically written to support ultra fast AES, yeah, of course, AES will be uh, one decimal order, at least uh, faster than compared to the Grasshopper. Uh, the implementations that um, merged into the LibGcrypt, into the uh, GNU TLS, into the LibreSSL do not have any assembly optimized instructions, so it's plain C. You can use that to actually understand the uh, algorithm. You can use them to actually check how, what is working and how it's working and to actually analyze the set of the uh, instructions, the set of algorithms. And of course, you are open to write assembly in an optimized way. The OpenSSL engine has received the, uh, some parts of the assembly optimization, and it, it is now getting a closer and closer to the uh, AS implementation of the OpenSSL. Okay. Uh, so something that I always wonder about, like the stuff like the, the Ghost Cypher Suite is the following. There are, there are eight countries in the world that have a larger population than Russia. There are 11 countries in the world that have a larger GDP than Russia. Would it, what if all of those countries also had the same idea of coming up with their own crypto suite? Would it be desirable for like something like the public internet for all of them to also be incorporated in crypto libraries? Okay. You know, that, that would fragment the internet quite heavily, right? I couldn't get the last phrase. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'll repeat the question. Sorry, I'll hold the microphone a bit closer. So there are eight countries that are yeah, larger yeah, than Russia. That, so. Eleven ones that have a larger GDP. What if each of those countries also made their own crypto algorithms and also put laws in place that required the use of those crypto algorithms in their country? Would that be a workable situation for the internet as a whole? Uh, I do not think that it will uh, make the situation worse. Uh, Chinese uh, government agencies are currently pushing the SM2, SM3, and SM4 uh, signature hash and encryption standards into the major crypto libraries. Uh, I do not know about the India. Well, well, we all know about the United States, and so that NIST is, uh, and NSA are pushing the, their their standards uh, uh, into through the uh, open benchmarks or through the, just through the RFCs. So. Well, things will not be worse. Uh, you do not have to actually use them. As the system administrator of the server, you do not have to, to allow all the uh, crypto algorithms. In fact, uh, you, uh, nearly all web services will probably have the limitation for the uh, server suits in the configuration file to use only a specific set that uh, this uh, sysadmin of them uh, seems, uh, sees as strong enough and good enough to be supported on, uh, on that web server. So, no, this doesn't open a can of worms. This doesn't open a full set of the uh, eight, nine, ten crypto algorithms. Uh, Japan has tried creating the Camellia and uh, related set, but uh, they have mostly stopped doing that, and they have, I think, mostly stopped enforcing the use of the Camellia in the uh, open internet. So there is Camellia GCM standardized, but it is not actually used. So, again, uh, uh, if we support these, if we allow one to use uh, the, uh, these primitives, 
it does not enforce one to use them. It does not enforce uh, and it does not allow you to use them by default because you will not be allowed to connect, for example, to the google.com by using the ghost ciphers. So, so let's all thank uh, Dimitri. Yeah.